knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. What I want to talk to uh, a little bit about today, the title of my sermon is what a reprobate should have been. What a reprobate should have been. So what is a reprobate? We hear this term kind of thrown around a lot. And, uh, reprobate, reprobate. These reprobates down here, this guy's a heretic. He's a reprobate. What is a reprobate? If you go to dictionary.com, if you pull out your smartphone right now that has a dictionary on it, and you can get on the World Wide Web, and you can look. This is not some kind of uh, uh, independent Baptist site. This is dictionary.com. Okay, this is uh, Get on dictionary.com, type in reprobate, and here's what it says. A person rejected by God and beyond hope of salvation. Amen. That's dictionary.com, okay? Uh, uh, praise God. There must have been an independent Baptist make, made, that, <laughs> made that up. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times, if you look for a biblical word or a biblical term, if you go to the first mention in the Bible that it talks about that, it will actually kind of give you the definition, or you can look at the context and kind of figure out what that word means. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go there. Jeremiah 6.30. Jeremiah 6.30. Jeremiah 6.30. In the Old Testament, you have, toward the ends of it, you have three big, or some big books. You have Isaiah, right after, you have Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, then you have Isaiah, then Lamentations, I'm sorry, then Jeremiah, then Lamentations, then Ezekiel, okay? So we're in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 30. Jeremiah 6.30. Look what it says. Jeremiah 6.30, it says, Reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord hath rejected them. And you say, well, maybe that's, you know, look at the terms in the first part of it. God's calling them, God is rejecting them, and He's calling them reprobate silver. He's not calling them silver because they're rejected. He's not calling them men because they're rejected. He's calling them reprobate because they have been rejected. That's what the word reprobate means. It means that you are rejected. The Bible teaches that it is too late for some individuals here on planet Earth. It is too late. Genesis 6, 3 says, And the Lord God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. So God's spirit that deals with people, God's spirit... That, that is trying to reprove the world of their unbelief, God's Spirit will not always strive with every person here on planet Earth. There comes a point, there comes a line that you can cross with God, and once you cross that line, then, then there's no more hope. Right, there's yeah. no hope. You've become reprobate. You've become rejected. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 in the New Testament and Psalms 81. You're in Jeremiah, so if you back up, if you back up, you're going to run into Psalms. Go to Psalms 81 and Ephesians 5. Get a bookmark myself. Psalms 81 and Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, uh, verse 18 it says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse 19, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Colossians 3.16, a parallel verse to, to, the, to these verses says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace unto your heart. Verse Chronicles 16, 9 says, Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of his wondrous works. So three times, you look at Ephesians, you look at Colossians, it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, it says, being filled with the Spirit, it says in Colossians, admonishing another, one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So let's try to be filled with the Spirit, let's try to admonish one another, and let's learn a psalm today. Yeah. You're commanded to sing psalms. Psalms is a songbook, and you're commanded to sing psalms. So let's learn a psalm. Let's, let's learn a new song today. Go to Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Psalm 81. We'll start in verse, uh, verse number 7. It says, Thou calledest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. 
O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up to their own heart's lust, that they walked not in my counsel. Look at verse 12. Look what it says. So I gave them up. So is a statement of an action based on a previous action or conditional action. So what follows the so happened because of what precedes the so. So, so, let's look at this verse. Let's look. Look at verse 12. What happens after the so? So I gave them up to their own heart's lust. What happened prior to? What caused God to give them up? Look, my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So what does this mean, would none of me? Would is just an old word that means want or to wish to do or, or to wish to have. An example of this is Numbers twenty two twenty nine. You don't have to turn there if you want to uh, write it down. And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would that there was a sword in my hand, for now I would kill thee. There's a cat that gets in my trash a lot, you know, and I would there was something in my hand a lot of times whenever I see this cat that's getting in my trash. <laughs> would, God said he, they would none of me, they wanted none of me. They didn't want anything to do with God at all, and God gave them up. God gave them up. Look at the eye. Look at verse 7. Who's talking? Who's giving them up? Who's giving them up? He said, so I gave them up. Look at verse 7. Who's it talking about? We're talking about God. Thou callest to my trouble. I deliver thee. I answer thee. I prove thee at the uh, waters of Meribah. It's God. It's God that gave them up. Turn to Rome. Keep a finger in uh, Psalms 81. We're going to fl be flipping back and forth and go to Romans 1. Go back to Romans 1. That phrase, God gave them out, is found elsewhere in the Bible, and we just read it. We just read it. That's the beauty of reading the, the chapter prior to the sermon. Everybody's getting that in their heart. They're getting that in their mind. They're getting prepared in their mind for the Word of God. Look at verse 21. Romans 1, verse 21. Like I said, we're going back and forth. Because when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. So they knew God, and they glorified Him not as God. Look at Psalms 87. I'm sorry, Psalms 81, verse 7. Did they know God? Yes, they did. Look what it says. Thou calledest in my trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee. Here are my people, and I will testify unto thee, O Israel. And then he starts going on. Uh, there shall be no strange God. I am the Lord God. They're knowing God. But did they glorify Him not, uh, as God? Look at verse 11. My people would not hearken to my voice, and they, wouldn't, they didn't want anything to do with me. They didn't glorify Him as God. They didn't want to have anything to do with God. And they knew who God was. They saw the miracles of God delivering them from the wilderness. They saw the miracles of God feeding them with the manna. God giving them the water from the rocky. They saw the miracles, and they didn't want to have anything to do with God. So they knew God, and they glorified Him not as God. We're talking about the same people in these two passages. Go to Romans 1.24. Romans 1.24. Let's look at that. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for either their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. That's homosexuals. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even, verse 28, even, even means equal to, the same way, the, as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So God gave them up, God gave them up, God gave them over. Right. Repeated, repeated, repeated. Right. Go back to Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Look what it says. But my, but my people would not hearken to my voice. This is verse 11. And Israel would none of me. They didn't want anything to do with me. So I gave them up to their own heart's lust. And they walked in their own 
counsels. God gave them up. It's the same people, folks. Psalms 81 is talking about the same people as Romans 1 is talking about. Is there any question that it's talking about? We'll give further proof. Uh, go back to Romans 1. Go back to Romans 1. Romans 1. This is the same group of people. Romans 1, look at verse 28. This is a, uh, a list of traits and characteristics of reprobates that God lists for us. So anytime that you see these people, you know, you see the, you see the little queer down at, down at the hair salon that he's prancing around and he's nice and he does a really good job on your highlights and he's just such a sweet guy and he's just such a nice guy. Go pull, pull out Romans 1 and look at verse 28 and, and following and find out what these people are about. What the, the sodomites are about. What reprobates are about. You see these people that are false teachers, reprobates, homosexuals, queers, whatever you want to call them. They are against God. God. They are haters of God. They have been rejected by God. And we don't need to have anything to do with these people at all. So they're not your friend at all. They're not what TV portrays them to be. They're not what the news media portrays them to be. They're wicked, vile people. Read that list and you tell me that you want to have anything to do with these kind of people here. Anything. Nothing at all. I don't want to have anything to do with them at all. Romans 1, 28. Look what it says. And even if they didn't like... Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Look here. Being filled with all unrighteousness. They're f completely filled to the top of all unrighteousness. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters. Look here. Here's the thing I want to focus on. Haters of God. These people hate God. So when you're out here soul winning and you run in to the homo behind the door. You knock on the door and, and the homo opens the door and the homo tells you that he loves God and the homo tells you that he's saved and the homo tells you those things. Ask him or her hey would you worship a God that says to put you to death? Would you worship? Because that's what the that's what the Bible says. The Bible says to put them to death. The Bible says, and people don't see. People don't understand that. They think it's just some kind of vigilante spree. Hey, let's just go kill them all. Let's kill all the homos. That's what they think, and that's not what it is. The government's responsibility was to punish these homosexuals or these people that were sodomites with death. Okay, with death. And you say, well, how, how would that process go? Well, the process would go a lot easier now because everybody's just some kind of just open flamer okay it's going to be a lot easier but what would happen is just like that i uh, accuse someone of murder or anything like that we're going to say hey you know bill is a sodomite over here and i take bill and the other people of the land take bill and we take him before the judges and say hey here's out of the mouth of two or three witnesses Bill is a sodomite. Yes, I confirm that. Here's the evidence that Bill is a sodomite. Then they kill him. Okay? Right. Amen. We're not talking about just people just going out and throwing. We're talking about it was a crime punishable by death. Amen. Okay? The first couple of months, if, if, if the United States, if, the, if this was the law of the land of the United States, it would be a very interesting couple of months, okay? Because, yep. I mean, after that, people would start going back into the closet, okay? Maybe the smokers would come out. So, because <laughs> so, the smokers went in and, and the queers came out. So, but that's what it is. It's not some kind of free-for-all people. They're a civil government, but the sodomites would get punished with death, okay? Because God knows that Romans 28, uh, Romans 128 and those following things, that's what they're all about. That's what they're all about. They're evil people. Evil people. But look at that. Haters of God. Go back to Psalms, I'm sorry, Psalms 81. Romans 130, backbiters, haters of God. Psalms 81. Look at look at the how God describes these people. Look what it says. Verse 15. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto Him, but their time should have endured forever. The haters of the Lord. So what is He talking about? The haters of the Lord, is the same, it's the same people. These people that wouldn't hearken to Him. These people that saw His wonderful works, they would not hearken to Him, and He gave them up. And it says in verse 12, So I gave them up to their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own ways. And it says in verse 15, the haters of the Lord. It's the same people, folks. The same people. Look at verse 13. Uh, Psalms 81, verse number 13. Well, verse 12, it says, So I gave them up to their own hearts' lust, and they walked in their own counsels. 
Oh, look here. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. God wanted them to hearken. God was calling for them, but they rejected Him. Go to Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter number 1. You're in Psalms. Turn to the right in your Bible. Proverbs chapter 1. God says, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me and had walked in my ways. That's what He wants. That's what He desires. He desires for them to do that. For them to walk in His ways. For them to hearken to Him. Look at Proverbs 1. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge? Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my Spirit upon you, or unto you. I will make known my words unto you, because I have called, and ye have refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have said it not, all of my counsel, and would, there, look there, and would none of my reproof. Amen. Same language. I will also laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh, and when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge, look here, they hated knowledge, and did not choose to fear the Lord. They would, there it is again, none of my counsel. They despised all of my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. They didn't want to have anything to do with God, but God God reached out to them first. God had the open invitation first. They are the ones that smack in God's hands away. They are the ones that don't want to have anything to do with God. Look at verse 28. They shall call upon me, but I will not answer. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You said, well, then everybody should be saved that calls upon the name of the Lord. But you know what? They're calling on Him, but He's not answering. He's not answering. You say, well, why is he not answering? Because for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay? You can't just call on God anytime you want to. God, just please save me, God. Please save me, God. The prerequisite is that you have to believe. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Okay? Believe. Go to John 12. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in your New Testament. You have to believe before you call upon the name of the Lord. John chapter 12, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. In your uh, New Testament, John 12. And here's the, here's the thing. They can call on Him, but they're not going to be saved because they don't believe. And you say, well, then they just need to believe. Okay? Well, here's the thing. They can't believe. Okay? That's what we're going to look at. They can't believe. John 12, 37. But though He had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on Him. It kind of sounds like Psalms 81 where He did all the miracles, He did all the works, He did all of these things, and they didn't want to have anything to do with Him. Right. Nothing at all. They didn't want to have anything to do with Him. The same thing in Romans 1, because when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Here in John 12, He's done so many miracles, yet they believe not. They knew God, but they didn't glorify Him as God. They didn't glorify the Lord Jesus Christ as God in the flesh. And they seen all the miracles. Look here, verse 38, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom the arm of the Lord has been revealed. Look here. Therefore, they could not believe. Okay? You say, well, what's the prerequisite of salvation? Faith. To believe. Right? That's right. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. If you can't do that, you can't be saved. That's right. Okay? You cannot be saved. Look at verse 40. John 12, 40. Let me read it again. 39. Therefore they could not believe because Isaiah saith again. Look here. Why can't they believe? Because He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes and understand with their heart and be converted and I shall, should heal them. There comes a point when you can't believe. Why can't you believe? Because God has turned you over to a reprobate mind. God has rejected you. 
God is finished with you. And you say, well, that's awful mean of God. No, God held His hands out and He sent His only Son to die for you and you rejected Him. You rejected the soul winner that's knocking on your door. You laugh and you mock at it and God's reaching His hand out and you just slap His hand away. You slap His hand away. So no, that's not mean of God. No, that's wicked of you. That's wicked of you. And that's why they're rejected and that's why we're going to get into it in a minute. We should hate them. Right. Amen. We should hate the reprobates, and that's what we're getting into next. When a person crosses the line and they're rejected by God, we must hate them. You're like, well, you're a hate preacher. Yes, I am. Amen. Guilty. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3.8, you say, oh, we should just love everybody. Ecclesiastes 3.8, a time to love and a time to hate. Right. If there was no time, hey, we should never hate anybody. Never. Why would it be in the Bible to say a time to love and a time to hate? Okay? You can't love the flowers without hating the weeds. Okay? You can't love children without hating pedophiles. you got to hate something in your life. And for anybody that sits there and says, I don't hate anything, you're, you're, you're lying or you're just an idiot. Okay? Or you're just some kind of dope-smoking hippie. Okay? That everything's awesome and everything's just great. The Bible commands us to hate. Hate the sin, love the sinner. Gandhi said that. Right. Gandhi. That's not in a Bible. And I don't know. Who knows? They may have, in, in some of these crazy versions, they, might, they may have slid it in there. Who knows? Notice Romans 1.28. You don't have to turn there. You go to Leviticus 5. Leviticus chapter 5. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Leviticus chapter number 5, but Romans 1.28, we read it a couple of times in those characteristics, that laundry list of traits of these reprobates. And you know what? Not all reprobates are homosexual, but all homosexuals are reprobates. Okay? That is a telltale sign that they are rejected by God. But not all reprobates are homosexuals. Okay? A reprobate is someone, you, you get some false teachers that are reprobates. You know? So don't sit there and say, well, this guy's not, he's not a, a sodomite, so he's not rejected. He's not a reprobate. That's incorrect, okay? Because right, right. there could be some people that are rejected by God that are not sodomites. But you could be dead sure that if someone is a sodomite, and, and you know all these people have these little, well, what about this time I, 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 I kissed this guy? I mean, just all this weird stuff. If, you bur if a, a human being burns in their lust toward the same gender, yeah. they that is an unnatural affection. They have been given over to a reprobate mind. Right. Okay? Yep. There are no ifs, no ands, no buts, no anything, okay? If they burn in their lust toward the same gender, they are rejected by God, they will go to hell. Amen. You know, the, the sooner the better. Yeah. The sooner the better. Right. Yeah. Leviticus 5, look at verse 14. But Romans 1.28, remember, keep this in your mind. Haters of God, that was one of the things, one of the descriptions of them. They hate God. <coughs> so I, want, I don't believe they hate God. Well, then you think Romans 1.28 is false. Yeah. And we all need to shut the door and just go home. Eat, drink, and be merry, and tomorrow we may die, you know? Right. If every word of this Bible is not true, then none of it's true. Right. Okay? That's right. Right. You can't disprove one word in this Bible. <coughs> Levit Leviticus, excuse me, Leviticus 5.14 And the Lord spake unto Moses, if a soul commit a trespass and sin through ignorance, that means you don't know, in the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish of the flocks, and with thy estimation by shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary for a trespass offering. And he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in this holy thing, and shall add the fifth part hitherto, and shall give it unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him. Oh, I've got one, thank you. Uh, and the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. Verse 17, And if a soul sin and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandment of the Lord God, look here, though he wist it not, it's okay. It's not a sin because he didn't know any better. 
Right? Is that what it says? No. Though he wist it not, yet is he guilty and shall bear his iniquity. And he shall bring a ram without blemish of the flock with thy estimation for the trespass offering and the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance wherein he erred and wist it not. And it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He hath certainly trespassed against the Lord. You say... You know, is the sin of ignorance still a sin? It is a sin, okay? You're guilty. It doesn't matter if you knew it or not. It would be worse punishment if, if, if you know, if you, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is sin, okay? But you know what? It doesn't mean it's not a sin, okay? I, 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 had, no idea, I had no idea fornication wasn't a sin. I've been, I've been fornicating all these years. You know, people say something. That's retarded. Why would you say that, you know? Just because you don't know that something's a sin doesn't mean it's a, Well, the Holy Spirit has not dealt with me about that, you know? How many people have heard that? It's a sin, folks. It is a sin. All right, go to Psalms 139, knowing this. So if you know it, or regardless if you know it or not, it's a sin if you don't do it. What the Bible says. That's why we're all sinners. Okay? That's why we're all sinners. That's why we need Jesus Christ. We say it. We sin every day. We have the sin nature. And you know what? For, for these people to sit there and say, well, uh, sometimes I sin. You don't know the Bible then. You know, the Bible says the thought of foolishness is a sin. You know? And I, I probably had four or five foolish thoughts on the way here this morning. You know what I mean? We're sinners. That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why we need His righteousness. Amen. Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So, no matter how good you are, you've come short. You don't measure up at all. I don't measure up. You know? Psalms 139, look here. Verse 21. Do I not hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise against thee? Look here. I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. David's not hating the sin and loving the sinner. He says, I hate them right. with perfect, right. complete hatred. Amen. I hate them and I count them my enemies. I don't want to have anything to do with these people. Okay? Go to 2 Chronicles 19. You say, well, that's David. That's David. That's not me. That's David. That's David hating these people. I don't have to hate these people. Okay, go to 2 Chronicles 19. You're in Psalms. Go, go back to the, to the left in your Bible. 2 Chronicles 19. Second Chronicles 19. Look at verse number 1, 2 Chronicles 19. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to the king Jehoshaphat, Look here, shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Why is wrath upon Jehoshaphat? Because he's helping the ungodly and he loves people that hate the Lord. Right. So God's wrath is going to be on you. God's wrath is going to be on me if we love people that hate the Lord. Right. And it says in Romans 1 that they are haters of God. Right. Anybody that sit there and dispute that is just looking and just spitting on the Bible, okay? You're just you, that is not opinion. That is what the Bible says. If a reprobate hates God's and you don't uh, you don't hate the reprobate, you are in sin. Right. Regardless if you know it or not. And you know what? God's wrath is upon you. Right. On you. I'm not condoning violence there again. I'm not saying that we need to go out here just with a big bucket of rocks hey, and just start throwing and, you know, pelting queers in the head with it, you know? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is because they need to be arrested, they need to be tried, and they need to be put to death. Amen. That's what needs to happen, okay? Not us. Not vigil Just like any kind of crime. Just like murder, just like rape, just like any other crime that is punishable by death, okay? The government should be doing that. Police officers shouldn't be out here, uh, oh, you know, how fast do you think you were going, son? How oh, I was doing uh, probably 60. Well, you know what the speed limit is? Speed limit is 55. They don't need to be doing that junk. They need to be rounding up all these abortion doctors and putting them in jail and putting them in death for murder. And they need to be uh, uh, roping up all these fags and throwing them in the who's gal and then having a trial and killing them. Amen. That's what they need to be doing. That'd keep you busy. That would keep you busy. So what's the most important part of the sermon? What 
a reprobate should have been. That's the title of the sermon. What a reprobate should have been. Go back to Psalms 81. Psalms 81. Look here. Look at verse 13. It says, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. Look here. I should have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. Those haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto Him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with the honey out of the rock. Should I have satisfied thee? Look at that term that keeps coming up over and over again. Should, 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 should. The reprobate should. He should have what? He should have gotten saved. He should have gotten saved at one point in his life. He should have got baptized. He should have gotten married. He should have went to church. He should have read his Bible. He should have read the Bible. He should have prayed. He should have became a soul winner. He should have lived a godly life. He should have raised a godly family. That's what God wanted. He should have done that. God said, I wanted him to do that. I wanted him to get saved. I wanted him to be godly. I wanted him to be righteous. And I stretched out my hand and he rejected me. Over and over and over again, he rejected me. But God said, I should have done all these things. This guy should have done all these things. I could have done so many miracles for him. I could have blessed his life. I could have gave him children. I could have gave him a, a, a fruitful life. I could have made him just blessed beyond his wildest dreams. He couldn't have lived this, this lifestyle of this death, this death style of drugs and disease and AIDS and fornication and all of this stuff. God said, I wanted so much better for this person. Amen. And they've rejected me. Yep. They've rejected me. But realize that these people, they had a chance at one time. And that's not... God didn't want them to be just re rejected of Him. God wanted to help them. They rejected. They're the ones that rejected. Hosea 9.15 it says, All of their wickedness is in Gilgal, for there I hated them. For the wickedness of their doings I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. Okay? Love them more and more, which that implies that at one point God did love them. Yeah. He did love them. God wants everyone saved. God's Spirit won't always strive with man, but it does strive with man. You think about it. If I said, I'm not going to always strive with Brother East Step, that means, you know, at some point we're going to quit, but right now we're fighting. Right now we're wrestling. Or wrestling. <laughs> 2 Peter 3 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering, not willing that any should perish. So you get these Calvinist people that say, Oh, well, God's election, God's choice. Well, if it was God's choice, everybody would be saved. Right. Yeah, right. Everybody would be saved. Hebrews 2 9, it says, We see that Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he may be, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Amen. Jesus Christ died for the reprobate. He died for them. He shed his blood for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him, right? He gave, and he loved the reprobate. He loved them. He loved the Sodomites, and he stretched out his hand, and they rejected it. And they rejected it. But if he had what he wanted, everybody'd get saved. Everybody would. 1 Timothy 4.10 For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all yeah. men. Especially those that believe, right? Yeah. All men. 2 Corinthians 6 2, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. God is calling right now and He wants everybody to be saved. He wants them all to get saved. Are they all going to get saved? No. Go to 2 Corinthians 4 and we're closing. Go to 2 Corinthians 4 in your New Testament. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. 1 and 2 Corinthians 4. Second Corinthians 4. So what's the point of this sermon? Uh, are you trying to get us to love the homos? Well, no. Absolutely not. Love the reprobates? No. It's to show that God should have done all these things for these people. These people rejected Him, but just to show you. These people had... God had a desire for these people. God had a plan for these people. 
God was stretching out His hands to these people. God said, I have called and you have refused. Okay? You have refused. So what can we do? We need to go out and preach the gospel before it's too late. We took the, the numbers before. Seven souls saved. Seven souls saved this week, right? We're fixing to go out more. That's what you can do to combat this stuff. Amen. That's what you can do. Right. In Isaiah 55, 6, Seek ye the Lord while ye may be, while he may be found. Call ye upon Him while He is near. What are we going to do? You know, say, we're already saved. What are, what are we supposed to do? 2 Corinthians 4, look at verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the Word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, if we decide, hey, we're just going to hide our gospel... I'm saved, but I'm not telling anyone. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Because you're not hurting the unsaved people. You're not hurting the people in here. If you don't, if you never give the gospel to anybody, you're not hurting me at all. Because if your gospel's hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Right. right? But look here. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. One thing I think is interesting about this, it says the God of this world hath blinded the minds. You know, the Bible talks about uh, you know, uh, being saved, talking about overcoming the world, right? There's a lot of things, there's a lot of, of, of uh, mind, uh, what, what mind, not saying mind control, but just a lot of influence and things that you have to get over to be saved. You have to get over the fact that, you know, because naturally you think, hey, good folks go to heaven, bad folks go to hell. You know, it's kind of ingrained in us. There's a lot of things mentally that you have to overcome to try to be saved. You say, oh, is it difficult to be saved? No, but everybody wants to do it themselves. People want to have a hand in their salvation. You know, and you have to get over that. There are things that you have to overcome with your mind to be saved and realize that it's just Jesus Christ alone, you know? That, so what I'm saying is, is the devil takes, and look what it says in verse uh, 4, the God of this world hath blinded the minds. The devil is continually trying to blind your mind with TV, blind your mind with magazines, blind your mind with just with Facebook, blind your mind with just, you know, co-workers and, and just the philosophies of this world, okay? So you think about it, if you don't overcome and you don't get saved and you're and you're just continually you're like, hey, I like being blinded. I like the devil blinding me. I like the devil blinding me. And God's holding out his head and you're smacking it away. I want the devil to blind me. God, God will say, fine, you're blinded. I will blind you. I will harden your heart. And you're done. And you're rejected by God. So look, in the whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ our Lord, our, and ourselves the servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commandeth the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts. Look, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this job. We have this ministry. It is our responsibility. If we hide our gospel, it's going to be hid to the lost. And you know what? If these people, regardless of what, and it says in Romans 1, for they are without excuse. Without excuse. So if these people never hear the gospel, never hear the gospel, and, and, and who, who was that guy on that, that show uh, recently that said, you know, the people, they could be saved by conscience. You know, some... some okay, yeah. Saved by conscience or whatever. That just somebody that is con convicted of their conscience, they, they could be saved. In the deep, dark jungles of Africa, you know. It's always the deep, dark jungles of Africa, you know, that people say this stuff. What if somebody's never heard the name of Jesus Christ and they die? They're going to go to hell. Yep. They're going to go to hell. And if, if that bothers you, then you need to sell everything that you have. You need to get on a plane and you need to go to the the deepest, darkest jungle in Africa and you need to go preach them the gospel. Amen. Okay? Amen. You need to go preach them the gospel if that bothers you that much. Amen. But realize, yes, yeah, should, do I hate sodomites? Yes, I do. I think they're disgusting. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Am I going to sit and just throw rocks at them? No. I think I'm just like I would uh, uh, some kind of murderer or something that lived down the street or somebody else worthy of death. I don't have anything to do with them. I don't want to get my kids around them. I don't want my wife around them. You know, the you know, just get away from me. You know, if I'm put, if, if I see somebody that's clearly a sodomite in uh, uh, 
in a grocery aisle, I'll go to the next one. I don't want to be near these people. I hate these people, okay? And the Bible commands me to hate these people, and I hate these people. But realize, it's not some kind of soft spot for it. It's a soft spot for the unsaved, okay? That God wants to do things in people's life. He should have done all these things. And if we don't give them the gospel, if we don't give them that opportunity, they could go and go, and God's Spirit will stop striving with them, and they'll eventually become rejected. We don't want that. We don't want that. So we need to be about our Father's business. We need to go in, therefore, and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what we need to do. That's how we can reduce the number of, <laughs> of reprobates out there. That's, why, that's how we can make this a better world. Okay? Get more people saved. Then there's more light in the world. You know, if we close the blinds and it was nighttime, we shut all the lights in here, and I gave everybody a light, and you turn your light on, it's going to be so bright in here. And then you turn your light on, it's so bright. And then you turn your light on, it's so bright. And if everybody in here lets their light shine, how much brighter would this place be, you know? Right. If everybody lets their light shine in Knoxville, Tennessee, how much better of a place would this be? But sadly, nobody's letting their light shine, you know? That's right. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Now, a lot of these people have just... You know, <laughs> and they're just throwing it. You know, they've chucked it. So many people's going to reject the gospel, but you know what? Some won't. That's between that. That's you know, God's going to give the increase. Okay. Right. Amen. We're not commanded to go and win souls. We're commanded to go and preach the gospel. Amen. So, okay. Let's bow our heads for prayer.